Hey everybody, welcome back to part two of this big uh, machinist tool pick. So we went back up into the living room. Uh, and we went through those boxes, bought that stuff you saw in uh, part one, and then uh, started going through the rest of the box. First thing I ended up buying was uh, this Minotoyo set of telescopic gauges for 15 bucks. It's a nice complete set. It's a smaller size set. It's only got four. I think I've got, I had the larger one at one point. I don't know if I still have that or not or if I traded it out for brown and sharp or whatever, but uh, it's a nice set and 15 bucks is a good deal on that. And then I got this Starrett depth mic. It's a zero to three inch for 20 bucks. And what's nice about this is it's a blade micrometer set. It's got the thin blades. Uh, it's only a zero to three, but it's still a nice little set and it's complete. It's in great shape. So then I started looking through the other stuff and uh, we started going back and forth, uh, you know, trying to work a deal and there were a couple of things that I was kind of on the fence about uh, but then finally put it all together and we settled on 275 for the rest of this stuff that he had in the living room which was uh, everything well except for indicators some other indicators so 275 for these nine items uh, first is this uh, Starrett drop indicator it's a thousandths indicator with uh, one inch travel. It's got the uh, lug back on it, but he also had the uh, flat back, which is kind of neat that he had both. This works perfect. And then also, uh, this is the attachment. This post right here gets clamped in an, in an indicator base, a mag base or surface gauge. And then uh, you've got a nice uh, thumb screw to put the lug on. Next up, we've got a Minotoyo. I honestly don't remember what's in here. Oh yeah, okay, so this is a Minotoyo uh, disc micrometer. These are really nice and clean. They get the satin finish, which is kind of neat, whereas the other ones have the, uh, the old um, green enamel frame on them. Next up, we've got uh, this kind of unmarked box here. And oh yeah, okay, this is the, uh, this is an SPI blade micrometer this is in excellent shape it's also a tenths model next up we've got a Minotoyo case and what's inside here is a nice set of absolute coolant proof digital calipers and they work perfectly and these are not counterfeits these are the genuine deal there's, uh, I'm not going to bore you with the details, but there's several ways to tell the genuine from the counterfeit. These are coolant proof and dust proof and whatever to the IP65 standard. You can actually see it right there. It's marked. And my other set that I have that I like are IP67 standard, which I believe means that they are probably more expensive new. Maybe they're newer, although they seem like they've been around for quite a while. But I, I really like, I like my uh, Minotoyo digital calipers. Those were the ones I used to use all the time. But lately, I must admit that I've been gravitating towards uh, using these DigitCals, uh, which are a Brown and Sharp Tessa product. So I like these too. Here's my Minotoyos. Yeah, see they're a little a little bit rougher shape but they uh, right there they say uh, IP67 so that's the main difference other than that they're almost identical next up got a nice pair of Starrett dial calipers uh, model 120s um, these are clean as a whistle I've had quite a few of these I usually end up uh, selling these though. Sometimes I'll hold on to them for a while, use them a little bit, but for the most part, I stick with uh, for the dial calipers. Uh, I've got my brown and sharps, and uh, for the digitals, like I said, I've got the Minotoyo and the uh, the brown and sharp Tessas. No engraving on them. Case is pretty good, so I'm sure I'll sell those quick. These last four items in this group are uh, where a lot of that $275 is sitting and 
he put a uh, kind of a premium on these next three items. These are micrometers, which uh, normally I'm not too crazy about buying micrometers because I have so many of them and so many of the guys that I sell to have got micrometers and they don't need them. But these interested me because um, I kind of have a weakness for this style of micrometer. He called these a window micrometer. Um, I've seen these under the trade name, I think, Intramic or something along those lines. I've got a couple of different variations on this theme. These are brown and sharp, um, but I believe they're made by Tessa or uh, Edelon. They're engraved. I think it's kind of funny. These are engraved uh, with a guy's name and then uh, 11967. That sure seems like a date. So, I mean, is it possible that these are that old? Um, I know that they've been making this style for a while, but this is a, a direct reading tenths micrometer. They actually work perfectly fine, which is unusual. Lots of times these are found to be in non-working order, but these seem to be working great. They say Swiss made, so they, they are most likely Tessa. So they close, they line up perfect, and there's a zero in the window. So I mean, there's no, no doubt about it. You, you know, you hold, there are little black dots at the lines. So, you know, when I put that there, that's five thousandths, ten thousandths. Just really easy and quick to read, and it just keeps going up and up and up, which is kind of neat, you know in hundred thousandths increments. So at a hundred thousandths, it goes back to zero and starts up, up again. But So these are kind of cool. Uh, I'm seriously contemplating keeping these for myself. And, and what's great is that not only did he have the one inch, he's also got the, the one to two inch in the same series. These were calibrated back in 08, 2008. Looks like maybe these were bought at a different time because I don't see the same name engraved anywhere on here and I do not see the, uh, the date on here. And he's got the two to three inch in this series. The one to two and the two to three are both almost identical except for size and they both were uh, calibrated at the same time. All, all right, this is ZK, that's the name that I saw in that first one. So definitely the same individual owned all three, but he may have gotten these later, I don't know. So I don't even know what these, um, what these run now. This is a Brown and Sharp 201. My Brown and Sharp uh, Handbook of Metrology, which is just a catalog, uh, actually has a section here and they're still showing uh, of course, this, this catalog is, I think, a 1992. Now, this catalog's pretty old, but uh, they were showing back in 92. They were already um, selling these at, under the uh, Edelon or Tessa Master brand, both. Uh, so in Edelon, they called them the... Um, I'm sorry, that's a different series. That's the Micro Rapid. In Tessa Master, they called them... Well, apparently they didn't have a special name for them. But then under Brown and Sharp up here, they show them as the direct reading inch and metric digit mic. And mic is spelled M-I-K-E and then slash digit master. Um, so the digit mic with M-I-K-E, um, I, I do have some of those. Yeah, it's probably a good thing I decided I'm going to keep these because the valuation is going to be kind of tough. They're, they they do still come up on eBay, um, the digit mics, but a lot of them look quite a bit different. I've had, uh, I think I still do have a couple different sizes of this style um, right here. The black frame with all the numbers in white and that very big clear window and um, they have issues with them. So I think one might work and the other one kind of has issues. I've taken them apart and looked at them and one of them I had to make a, a brass collar uh, because the plastic piece had split and the parts aren't available. So obviously it's a problem. More typical are going to be these here like I just showed you in that 92 catalog. It's 
It's got the window there, very similar, um, but it looks like it's a newer style. And by newer, I mean more like the one in the 92 catalog as opposed to my old old ones here, which may go back to the late 60s, early 70s. That leaves uh, one more item from this lot. And I think out of the 275 that I paid for this pile, I think I figured about 100 to 120 of that was right here in this box. So this is a uh, Edelon Swiss manufactured. And what is in here is a beautiful um, small hole gauge or bore set. Uh, I believe these may go by the trade name Intramic when they're brown and sharp. Um, under Edelon, I'm not sure what they, uh, if they have a special name for them. Well, I have still got my catalog handy. I guess I could check. So in brown and sharp and Tessa, uh, this type of bore gauge is referred to as uh, Intramic. And in Edelon, which, what, which is what these are, uh, they're referred to as Engage, I-N-G-A-G-E. So these are for really precise uh, measurements of small bores. And we've got four sizes, and we have four standards. We have an adjustment wrench, and then we have an extension rod, which is interesting. So these say 531B on them. Um, so the 531B gauges, the larger sizes are sold individually. And um, you know, they regularly trade on eBay for around $120 a piece. Oh, well, there you go. So this one right here sold for $122. Searching for them as the uh, Edelon N-Gauge sets, I can't find any that have sold. Here's somebody uh, looking to sell a set for $700. Looks like that might be some of the larger sizes. Here's somebody looking to sell a set similar to mine. Interesting, they're calling that brown, they're calling it brown and sharp intramic, so I guess they're interchanging the name there. And they're looking for 600 best offer. Looks like they're missing two of the standards. So no matter how you slice it, I did pretty well getting these at the price I got them for. Yeah, as far as eBay goes, the trick was to search for the uh, the intramic trade name. And I found a couple of these sets that sold for 550 bucks plus shipping. And that's for a used set. That was a really good score. I, I, I knew it was a good deal, but I didn't realize it was anywhere near that kind of a deal. And on that note, I think we'll close out part two right here and we'll pick up the next pile of stuff in part three.